Hello and welcome to Pickleball Therapy, the podcast dedicated to your pickleball improvement. Hope you're having a great week. This week's podcast, we're going to be talking about slowing things down. And not just the shots. We're we'll talking about slowing down the mind. By now, you probably already know that we have a soft game workshop coming up on July 20th. So during the workshop, we're going to be talking about the shots, the techniques, the strategy, why you do it, how you do it, and talking about the bangers and how we can outsmart bangers by using that technique. But in the podcast, we're going to talk about is the mental side of things and how we slow things down when we play the soft game. It also helps us slow our minds down and how that can help us improve our pickleball while we're playing, while we're out there playing. My name is Tony Roig. I am your host for the Pick Pickleball Therapy Podcast. I am also an author of a pickleball book, as well as the uh, main face behind the Into Pickle YouTube channel, not to mention Better Pickleball, the Pickleball System, and other things that I do with my partner and your friend, CJ Johnson. So a lot of pickleball content uh, that we produce, and pickleball therapy is, is one of those uh, pieces of content, uh, one of those types of content, but it's the one that I... I particularly enjoy because it lets us focus on the mental side of pickleball and give us all some pickleball therapy, myself included. So uh, as I mentioned a, a minute ago, we got the workshop coming up on July 20th. You definitely want to join us for the workshop. Uh, it's going to be a 90-minute intensive presentation on uh, the soft game, and we'll go, through, go to it in detail. If you're not um, part of our email list at betterpickleball.com, make sure you're on our email list. If you're on our email list, don't worry about it. You're going to get an invite to the Soft game workshop, and you can uh, claim your ticket there. All right, let's talk about you know how things can get out of whack sometimes for us when we're out there, and things are just going super duper fast. Um, whether it's the shots, whether it's you know the 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 way we're we're approaching the uh, the game and things like that, and let's talk about how we can um, think about it differently and slow ourselves down. Stay tuned for the riff, by the way, on this one, because on this today, we're going to be giving you a tip on uh, an actual technique you can use that you can employ to slow your mind down. It's a really useful uh, technique you can use if you're having difficulty slowing yourself down. So let's talk about the concept first. As you know, we like to talk about the big picture concept first, because that's how we understand the rest of what we're going to be, um, you know, how we understand the whole thing, the whole picture. So what happens a lot of times is, you know, when we're either, uh, you know, in open play or we're working with some uh, players at a camp or something like that, is things seem to get really fast and everywhere, meaning like the, the balls start going really fast, they're popping back and forth, um, the, the players are rushing around, they're trying to get the ball, they're trying to serve it, they're just going a mile a minute out there, and what can happen is it can lead to less than optimal play for you. Because what happens is as you're running around, rushing around, you're not really taking the moment to focus on what's next, to focus on what you need to do to correct whatever error you're committing in your game. You're probably not even noticing. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's not uncommon for pickleball players to not be able to re call what happened during a rally and we're talking about a rally that just occurred and we're talking about a rally i'm not talking about a rally that's like you know uh, you know 30 shots or 40 shots or something like that i'm talking about a rally that's like three four five six shots and you go on the court and you and you you know when we're coaching we'll we will re um we'll talk about the rally so we'll say okay on this shot you know player this did this and then you did that and and things like that and again not uncommon for players to look at us and go I hit that shot or I didn't hit that shot. And you're like, no, you definitely hit that shot. Um, and not a criticism. I'm not trying to criticize or make anybody feel bad here. But I want you to recognize that when that when that is happening, right, when you're not able to recognize what's going on on the court and not recall what happened, it's very difficult to make adjustments in your game. It's very difficult to to then be able to say, uh, oh, okay, I see what I'm doing here and what I need to do, uh, you know, the next time is something else or I'm doing this well, maybe I need to keep doing it if you're not seeing what you're doing to begin with. Again, very difficult to make adjustments in, in real game time. And it's real difficult to implement strategies, right? Because in order to implement strategies out there, you need to be able to see what's happening on the court as you play in real time. And I would attribute a lot of that kind of... Um, in a bit that in that kind of but that inability to recall what's happened or inability to see what's going on to a rushed mind to a mind that is very 
busy and has a lot of things running around out there, you know, sort of like uh, like uh, ping pong balls in your brain, just bouncing around back and forth, back and forth. And it's very hard to play your best pickleball and to enjoy yourself to the fullest when your brain is running at that level. So when you think about, okay, how do I slow myself down? Well, I'll give you a couple of tips here. And then in the riff, I'm going to give you a really good, it's a breathing technique, but I'll, we'll, we're going to do it together. It's going to be a, it's going to be a follow along in the riff. So a little bit different uh, uh, feel for us. And what, what, um, but a couple of things you can do is one is you can start working on your soft game. Now, soft game I'm talking about here is the shots that you're hitting. That would be like, you know, your dings, your, your uh, third shots, your block volleys. Those kind of shots are going to use to slow the game down outside of your body, right? And once you do that, then you're more likely to be able to slow the game down inside your body, inside your mind. So the soft game technique, right, the shots that will help you with that, with learning the soft game, will definitely help you slow everything down, including your mind. But a couple of other things that you can do that will help, um, even if you're not yet proficient in the soft game, is you can take the paddle out of your dominant hand between rallies. You've heard us say this before in other uh, situations, other contexts, it gets you kind of as a reset technique for your mind. That also slows you down. Because if you have your brain, you know, flying all over the place and all of a sudden you take your paddle out of your hand, okay, reset, what's up? Okay, check in with yourself for a minute, right? By doing that. And another thing that we highly recommend is when you are serving... You have complete control over the tempo of your serve, meaning how quickly you execute the serve. Don't go rushing around calling out the score, one, 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 and then serving right away. We call it insta serving, and I will tell you anecdotally that leads to a lot of missed serves. Take your time. You know, find a routine that works for you. For some players, it's bouncing the ball. For other players, it's just taking a minute. For other players, it's just not literally a minute, you know, just a second. For other players, it's maybe rocking back a little bit, looking forward. A uh, player who I know very well, John puts his puts one paddle across his you know his other hand, uh, puts the paddle across his other hand to set himself before he serves. What you know, uh, Leah Jansen is famous for like tapping herself you know on the on the shoulders and on her thighs to before she serves. So whatever it is that you need uh, to do, do that before you serve. And on the return of serve, get used to raising your paddle if you're still getting into position. And what I mean by that is, I don't mean raise your paddle like paddle ready to hit the ball. I mean raise your paddle above your head, indicating to your to your opponent, to the serving team, that you are not ready. That way you're not, you know, just kind of getting your feet set and the ball's coming your way. Get used to slowing things down. This will also lead into some intentionality for you because you're being more intentional on your movements, intentional on your serve, intentional on your return to serve, and how you're getting ready for them. And as I mentioned in a, in a previous podcast, more than once, I'm sure, intentionality is a muscle. Intentionality is, a, uh, is an acquired skill. The more that you work on your intentionality, the easier it will become. But the key at the end of this is to make sure that you are trying to do things that will help you slow yourself when you're out there. Uh, Lee Whitwell was kind enough. Uh, she's an excellent pro player and just a great ambassador for the sport. Uh, she was at the summit and I asked her whether she would um, do a podcast with us uh, while we were there. And she said, absolutely. No question about it. So we did the podcast. And um, what she talked about both in the summit and the podcast is this idea of time. And it's a common mistake that players make is to think they don't have enough time when you're out there. Like everything has to happen super, super, super fast. Not the case. You have agency over yourself and over how you move and how you, how you respond to what's going on out there. Uh, apply your agency, start working on intentionality, use these little tips here. And I'll, again, use the breathing technique. I'm going to give you in a second in the riff, but use the, 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 uh, the tips of, you know, taking your paddle out of your hand, taking your time on your serve, putting your paddle up when you're returning serve to slow yourself down, slow the game down, and you'll end up feeling better out there. And as I mentioned, a f- you know, a few minutes back, make sure you put down July 20th on your calendar. You're going to want to join us for the soft game workshop. It's a part of the game that is, often not sufficiently well understood by uh, sub four or five pickleball players, you know, three oh three five beginners, three oh three fives, two fives, you know, four oh's even don't really fully appreciate the benefits of the soft game and understanding those will help you play better pickleball and also slow everything down. All right. In the riff, I'm going to give you a tip on a 
breathing technique that you can use, and we're going to do it together. It's going to be a lot of fun. Before we do that, I wanted to give you the word of the week. The word of the week this week is time. Time, because you have much more than you think you do. So when you're out there, think of it, start thinking in terms of time. Think of that dimension of the game, and it'll help you. Um, it'll help you uh, slow yourself down, understanding that hey, I have more time than I think I do. And work on that on that process of, of recognizing how much time you have. And you'll slow yourself down and play much, much better pickleball. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention before we jump into the riff is that we have our next pickleball system class opening uh, at the end of July. So enrollment will be at the end of July, right after the workshop. We're going to have the enrollment. If you are on our system wait list, you're going to get early registration. Early registration will include um, an additional bonus in there if you want to register before the before the um, the twentieth. Actually, it's you have to register well before the twentieth. But whatever the date is in the email you're going to get, it'll tell you. But basically, there's a um, there's a, a bonus that we want to give you because we know that you're you've been waiting for the system class. Uh, you know, you put your you've taken the step of putting yourself on a wait list, and that's kudos to you for doing that for taking that step forward and then the next step would then be to enroll for the class so we're going to make that enrollment as simple as we can for you to get you to to get you what you want which is your next step and your pickleball journey and your improvement as a pickleball player so be on the lookout for that all right let's talk about uh, let, let me give you this breathing technique i think it's you're gonna find it super helpful it's a breathing technique that cj shared with uh that i learned from cj and uh, we share in the camps that we that we do the pickleball system camps that we do with our campers. We've done them in different in the classes. We'll do it sometimes depending on the you know the the and the stage of the class and things like that. But we'll, we'll share. We've, we it's a it's a breathing technique that we're super uh, fond of, and uh, it's really helpful. So we're gonna do it together. So get ready. As long as you're not like doing something where you can't be doing this, but uh, you keep your eyes open. And everything so it'll be fine. So what we're gonna do it is we're gonna breathe in deep breath. So go with me. Deep breath. And then push out two breaths. So it's. We're going to do it two more times so you can feel the full effect of it. So breathe in, deep breath. Breathe out, two pushes. Let it all out. One more time. Deep breath. And then let it out. And it's important that you do it in two pushes, not one push. Uh, I don't, I'm not an expert on the physiology of it, but there's a reason you do it. Uh, I was actually, I, was, I learned, uh, I shared it with a friend and my friend said, well, that's Lamaze breathing, you know, Lamaze breathing. I'm like, well, it's good enough for childbirth. It's good enough for playing pickleball because sometimes pickleball feels uh, like what I imagined given childbirth is. I've never, ever done that. Uh, but, um, but, you know, it's a technique you can use whenever you're feeling a little bit tense, right? You're starting to get tense. You're feeling, um, Lee Whitwell was talking about it in terms of like your neck, right? She goes, we're all born with a neck. So if you're ever out there and you see your neck like disappearing, remember to breathe. And so you can use this breathing technique to help you relax. Probably when we did it just now, you felt your shoulders kind of loosen a little bit. Your arms get a little looser. Everything gets a little bit looser. So it's a good breathing technique you can use whenever you, know, you have one of those tough situations. Maybe you pop the ball up. Maybe you missed a shot that you're upset that you missed, whatever. Uh, if you have the time, and normally I'll tell you on a pickleball court, you have the time to do this. You're just going to kind of like surreptitiously, you can do it without making noise. You just breathe in and then out twice and you're going to feel better. And if you get to do it a couple of times, great. Particularly if the ball rolled onto the other court or something, you're waiting for somebody to do something. The other team's talking, whatever. Do that and you're going to feel a lot better. So um, remember, slow yourself down out there, not just strategically, but also in your mind. And you'll enjoy yourself more and play much better pickleball because you'll see things much more clearly or speaking of working or being slow if you have a minute don't forget to rate and review the podcast i know it can seem intimidating sometimes to go in there and press those buttons to rate and review it and write a write a little clip in there but it really really helps the podcast and it really really helps other players find the podcast i can't tell you how many players have come across the podcast and they'll say oh my god you know, i can't believe i found this podcast and it really helps them with their game you can be a catalyst in that process. You can be a part of this process and help with that. If you're interested in becoming a pickleball therapist, it's actually a thing. Uh, we have 20 some folks that have already uh, committed to it. So um, uh, send me an email at therapy at betterpickleball.com. Therapy at betterpickleball.com. Put therapist in the, sub in the subject line so I know what it's about. 
and I will send you the information so you can do it. It's a commitment not to the not to me and not to the podcast. It's a commitment to you and to your growth, your mental growth as a pickleball player. Uh, and then also, if you have any ideas for podcasts or any stories you want to share, um, some, it's really helpful sometimes for pickleball players out there to hear from other pickleball players. It's one thing to hear from me, you know, but I'm a senior pro player and I'm a master teaching professional, been doing this for a long time. Uh, I have been through the trials and tribulations that many of you are going through, but it's been a minute, right? So if you have a story that you think might be helpful for another player to hear, share it with us and we'll be happy to share it on here if we think it has that kind of, you know, have that kind of impact. Then if you have a question, ask it. We love answering questions. Uh, you know, we answer questions all the time about, you know, different situations that you're facing out on the court and how to deal with it. Again, therapy at betterpickleball.com. And lastly, if you enjoyed the podcast, please share it with your friends. Remember, if you enjoyed the podcast, I'm going to bet they'll enjoy it too. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time.